Hello and welcome to our dining guide for Enchanted Princess. In this video we are going to cover all of the restaurants and eateries aboard this stunning cruise ship and we'll tell you which ones you should try and which ones you should avoid. So if you're feeling hungry, let's make a start. Enchanted Princess has a variety of casual, all-inclusive eateries on board and no place is better or more popular than the International Cafe. This venue is open 24 hours a day and serves hot and cold snacks throughout. The International Cafe was our venue of choice when it came to breakfast as we could grab a great egg and cheese muffin here and order a couple of lattes to start the day. The International Cafe also serves freshly made paninis, croissants, wraps, cakes and lots of sweet treats for you to try. Not too far away from the International Cafe in the Piazza is the Salty Dog Gastro Pub. The Salty Dog serves a decent range of whiskies, craft cocktails and other beverages, as well as a mouth-watering food menu. This is a casual speciality dining venue charged at $18 per person for two gourmet plates, which include dishes such as a gourmet burger and lobster mac and cheese. Unfortunately, this dining venue wasn't open for food during our cruise, however the menu is very mouth-watering and $18 does seem like a fair price for what's on offer and we hope to try it on another Princess Cruise sometime in the future so we can bring you our honest opinion. Fancy an ice cream? There is no better place than Gelato, Enchanted Princess's very own ice cream parlour, also situated on Deck 5 in the Piazza. Gelato is an extra charge venue and works out at around $1.50 and $5 depending on what you go for and how many toppings you have. You can choose between fresh and fruity flavours such as mango and strawberry to naughtier options such as tiramisu and salted caramel. This venue is open from late morning to mid-evening most days and it's definitely worth a visit. Enchanted Princess has three main dining rooms, Santorini, Capri and Amalfi. All three dining rooms operate under both club dining and dine my way which allows you to arrive at your restaurant when you're ready, just simply check availability through the Medallion app. The three main dining rooms aboard Enchanted Princess all serve identical menus which change each day. However, there are some standard dishes which include prawn cocktail, salmon and Alfredo fettuccine. As we've acknowledged and observed in previous videos on other cruise ships, the main dining is an area which has shown significant decline since the pause in cruise operations, in terms of food quality, variety and presentation. And unfortunately, Enchanted Princess was no exception. While the food wasn't the worst we've had, it wasn't premium either, and is a long way from what we've eaten aboard Princess ships pre-2020, and certainly does not come close to what Princess tell you you're going to get on their website, in brochures and in promotional videos. We were also very disappointed to see how limited the options were for vegetarians and vegans, particularly when you consider a ship departing from a UK port where one in five people in the UK have one of these dietary requirements. The lunch menu in the main dining was particularly poor, as on some days there wasn't a single option for a vegetarian, let alone a vegan. The Amalfi Dining Room at the aft of Deck 6 is home to Chef's Table Lumiere, a culinary dining experience like no other on board or in the fleet, where dishes are cooked and prepared under the watchful eye of the ship's executive chef. This isn't a venue for us as you need to be the sort of person that is willing to try any dish that is put in front of you. Chef's Table is charged at $95 per person and is the perfect dining venue to celebrate that special occasion. Located at the forward end of Deck 5 is the Italian speciality restaurant Sabatini's Italian Trattoria. This extra charge dining venue serves dishes from all over Italy including burrata, cheese and tomato, calamari, linguine carbonara and salt piccata. This is a venue not to be missed. Sabatini's is charged at $25 per person and operates by booking only which can either be done in person or through the medallion app. 
The standard of the food is amazing, the surroundings are beautiful and the service felt incredibly personal which is something we always look for when dining at an upcharge restaurant. Even though we liked everything we ate here, the menu just isn't as broad and as premium as what you get at Sabatini's on other ships in the Princess fleet, serving incredible dishes such as lobster three ways which is honestly one of the best dishes we've ever eaten. Sabatini's Italian Trattoria does feature a reduced and less premium menu compared to Sabatini's, however there is no doubt that it is worth the $25 per person cover charge and it is a venue we'd return to the next time we sail with Princess Cruises. If you love sushi then you'll love the Ocean Terrace. This venue is a speciality restaurant where passengers are charged for each dish that they order and operates on a first come first serve basis. If we could give you a tip it would be to try and get a seat at the bar so that you can watch the talented sushi chefs prepare your meal right in front of you. This is probably the best sushi restaurant we've tried at sea so far and does feel just that little bit more premium than the likes of Azumi on Royal Caribbean. If you love steak and seafood then you must try the Crown Grill as it's not just one of the best steakhouses at sea that we've tried, it's one of the best restaurants we've ever eaten at full stop. Regrettably we were unable to eat here aboard Enchanted Princess as it sold out months before the cruise. That shows you just how popular and revered it is. Charged at $29 per person, this venue is so good that it gets booked up months before a cruise. So if you're keen to put our view of it to the test, try and book through the Medallion app weeks before your cruise because it will sell out. On the starboard side of deck 7 at the top of the piazza you have Gigi's which is the casual and inclusive pizzeria aboard Enchanted Princess. This venue operates by a first come first serve basis and serves a delicious variety of Italian classic pizzas, calzones and Italian desserts including tiramisu. The pizza here wasn't the best we've had, the base was as tough as a boot and it wasn't very cheesy and certainly does not come close to the pizza served at the Olive Grove on Iona and falls very short of the pizza you can grab at Slice located poolside on deck 16. Slice is particularly good though and this is the pizza you need to try. Bistro Salamere is the French speciality restaurant on board Enchanted Princess with dishes created by three star Michelin chef Emmanuel Renault. This venue is charged at $29 per person and serves dishes including off mole Florentine which is egg cheese and mushrooms to you and I and fish and chips which I'm pretty sure was English the last time I checked. We had no issue with the quality of the food here although the presentation of the fish and chips was ridiculous. Despite the head waiter's best efforts to try and explain why three fish fingers were served to me on a fancy napkin, I still don't understand it. Nothing really blew us away at Bistro Salamere, everything that we tried just seemed very mediocre and didn't feel worth the cover charge in the same way that Sabatini's Crown Grill and Ocean Terrace did. So unfortunately, Bistro Salamere isn't a restaurant we'd be keen to try again and it's not one that we'd recommend. Just before we head up to deck 16, why not go and hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon to be notified of any future cruise uploads by us. You'll also find us on other social media platforms including Instagram and TikTok. Sitting next to Slice on deck 16 you have the Salty Dog Grill which is the poolside fast food joint serving burgers, hot dogs, chips and nachos for lunch and early dinner. This venue is also included as part of your cruise fare and we have to say as poolside eateries go on cruise ships it was very good indeed but because it's a popular dining venue on board this does lead to very long queues particularly at lunchtime. Taking up almost a third of the deck space on deck 16 is the World Fresh Marketplace which is the buffet style restaurant aboard Enchanted Princess. This is an incredible buffet it's well laid out, spacious, features great variety for breakfast, lunch and dinner and the quality and standard of the food 
is as you would expect from a premium cruise line like Princess. Overall, we were pretty impressed with the dining aboard Enchanty Princess and for most cruisers it will prove sufficient. But if you're somebody that's been on a particularly brilliant cruise ship for foodies, like p and Iona, then you may feel that Enchanted is falling a little short in terms of her offerings. Main dining is the area where we feel needs drastic improvement. The food is okay, but it needs to be better than that on a cruise ship which falls into the premium cruise category. With the exception of Bistro Salamere, we enjoyed our meals at all of the upcharge venues and feel that they are very fairly priced when you consider the quality and standard of cuisine you're being served. The Crown Grill would be our venue of choice, it is definitely one of our favourite speciality restaurants at sea and is priced very competitively when you compare to the likes of the Veranda Steakhouse on Cunard Ships. The big area of concern for us is passengers being able to book these venues. Ships like Enchanted Princess are now sailing at full capacity on most cruises, but that isn't matched with crew. Cruise lines like Princess are still struggling to recruit staff, self-isolation policies are still in place, and to add salt to the wound, Princess have the Medallion app, which is the most counterintuitive piece of technology at sea. Our best advice is to try and book these venues as early on as you can preferably weeks before your cruise or as soon as you get on board. As the standards of food continue to fall in the main dining rooms, more and more passengers are willing to book these upcharge restaurants and with all the elements working against passengers' freedom to book them, more and more passengers are going to be very disappointed when they can't book the dining venue that they've heard so many good things about. Fine dining and good food is one of the most important elements on a cruise. We just feel that things could just be that little bit better aboard Enchanted Princess. It's not like we're asking Princess to become something they're not. They've proved to us in the past what they're capable of when it comes to inclusive dining and we live in hope that they can show us once again. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more cruise ship dining guides, ship tours and reviews, please click that like button and subscribe to our channel. We've got so many cruises lined up and we'd love to take you with us.